I've been having a chat with Trader Nick. And a warm welcome to one and all. And if this is your first time here, I am the overgrown child that is the scruffy trader. And what I'm trying to do is put trading in the real world. Maybe show you a trick or two along the way. So if that sounds good, do take a second to hit that little subscribe button. Genuinely helps. And if you find value from any of the videos, smash the like and the super thanks. Keeps the channel on air. So what we're up to? Well, Last week, I did an interview with Trader Nick. And if you haven't come across him before, do go on YouTube and search him out. Trader Nick or A1 Trading. Um, he's one of the upfront traders, a little bit like myself. Shows what he's doing in the moment and talks a lot of common sense. So when we decided to have a little chat, I was more than happy to speak with him. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play you the interview. If you've got any questions, drop it in the comments below. And as I say, go check him out. He's a cool guy. Let's see the interview. Well, we're waiting. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the podcast. Today, we are talking with Gary, aka the Scruffy Trader, and he is a riot. You guys will really like hearing from him, I'm sure. He's a funded trader, meaning that a prop firm has allocated money to him to trade, uh, which is an awesome thing. It's a, it's an honor for, for anybody to achieve that sort of thing. So I'm hoping that you guys get a lot out of this conversation. And hopefully, if you're interested in getting funded yourself, Gary will have some tips that will really make you think about getting funded, how to approach it, how to, to do it in a way that is uh, appropriate so that you're not just blowing a lot of money on, on uh, examination fees and such that, that you know can really pile up. So without further ado, I'll introduce you to Gary and let's hear what he has to say. Hey guys, welcome back to the podcast. Today I am joined with Gary. He is aka the Scruffy Trader. He is somebody who I've chatted back and forth with on Instagram and socials for a while. Gary, how are you and welcome to the podcast. Very well and great to put a face to the messages. It genuinely is. Yes, of course. So uh, Gary, first of all, we have to ask about the name, the Scruffy Trader. Where did it come from? How did you, how did that come about? And uh, just give us a little bit of background about yourself and, and your trading experience so far. Uh, and then we'll dive into some of the good questions that will come after. Super, super. Yeah, um, the Scruffy Trader is, a lot of people would naturally assume my charts are, are mental, being called the Scruff. It's not. It's actually a nickname from my wife. Uh, because I am what's called a natural born scruff. I can make a mess anywhere. It's just nature of what I am. And well, analogy, you put me in an Armani suit 10 minutes later, I look like I've been through a hedge backwards. <laughs> the scruff. Okay. But when it comes to my trading and how it came about, I'm very analytical and I'm very methodical in what I do. And trading for me, um, was an accident. I never set out to be a trader. I never thought I'd be one today. Um, it was a natural evolution from a business that I had. And I fell into it while I was in a business meeting, trying to drive the price down on a container of goods from Japan. And the guy couldn't do it because of the exchange rate. And at the time, I had a, a guy work for me. He was a commercial bank manager. And he's going well, you must be doing forward purchasing and all of this sort of thing. And at the time, I had a clue what they were talking about, just straight over the top of my head. And from there, it kind of grew into trading because as my business grew, we ourselves had to go to manufacturers and buy the containers direct from source rather than a distributor how we were using before. So we ended up actually buying the currencies ourselves so my route into trading is not as you would normally see, where they see the glossy lights and think, oh, well, I might make a bit of money here. It was actually my job. And then sure. when the factory shut, uh, 2017, market forces kind of closed it down. Um, I needed a job. And five years later, here we are. 
There you go. Well, that, that's a great uh, introduction. So, so inspired by your wife, I'd actually listened to your uh, conversation with Etienne uh, and, and heard that story a bit before, but I wanted to make sure that our audience as well heard it. So, of course, you got the, the cool nickname. You've got, it, it's very, uh, it, like you say, it's, it's self-fitting to, to you and your, uh, your style, your personality, which is awesome. I've always noticed that, you know, you've always had that sort of lighthearted, uh, you, you don't take it all too seriously, which I really appreciate, especially in this industry we get all the people who are so, you know, uh, so right about everything kind of thing. So it's nice to hear that. And I'd love to hear a little bit, if you could, just a bit of your trading style, your approach. Uh, does it match the scruffy nickname? You know, tell us a little bit about sort of how you approach the markets in, in however way you'd like to answer that question. Um, no, my, my, my trading doesn't match the nickname at all. Um, I'm very methodical. Mm -hmm. um, because of the way that I started in this. For me, it was always price and levels. So I pay close attention to levels and I'm very meticulous with it. I'll sit on a Sunday and I'll mark up my primary markets and each one of them will be leveled. I use a lot of fibs because uh, I rely on fibs, but they're all high time frame. So you might see me trading on a five minute chart, but the idea comes from way up the chart. The five minute or the 15 minute is just there really to fine tune an entry. And I'm also very patient as a person. Now, I'm predominantly a day trader. I, I Personally, I think there's four disciplines in trading. You've got the scalper who wants just two or three pips. I think that's hard work. Certainly, if you want to make a living from it. You have a day trader, which is myself, where it's 10, 30 pips within a day. And I'm happy with one to two trades. Now, if you size appropriately, that will pay you the wage. But then I do do sort of investment trading, if you want to call that, for my pension or, or sort of like my car that sits on the drive, which is swing trade. And as we know, they're sort of past 24 hours into a couple of weeks. Or you've got long-term position trading for a year or whatever. Um, so I sit somewhere in the middle. And... If I was to sum up what I do, it's waiting most of the time. I'll work out on a morning what I'm after. I'll filter the markets into two or three products. Um, you, if you've seen my channel, you see I've got this crazy spreadsheet that I use. Um, that's just a filter. It's nothing more than a filter. Once I've figured out a product that will move, I'll lock into that for the day. And then I'll wait for the criteria that I'm after. And I'm, I'm not big on indicators or anything like that. It's more the structure of the chart, the price action, and then I'll overlay indicators just to kind of confirm a decision I've already made. And that's about it, really. It's very simplistic what I do. Sure. I just want to jump in here for a second to let you guys know that if you're not already inside of our private Discord channel, you can join using the link down below in the description and you can get access to a community of traders that are dedicated to, like Gary, uh, serious trading and you know realistic approaches to this stuff. It is not an overnight get rich quick scheme and we've built a community of people that sort of uh, kind of agree with that. So if, if you're someone who would agree with that too and would like to join our Discord, the link will be down below in the description. Now back to the video. And let me ask you, Gary, uh, so, so those are some great points. You pointed out the different disciplines, the different time frames, and, and, and different ways that traders can approach it. You've mentioned that you focus more on the day trading side of things, maybe getting a trade or two on a good day. What does that look like in terms of your, your style, in terms of are you more of a trend follower? Are you a momentum trader? Do you trade reversals, pullbacks? What's sort of a, what are you looking for just in a broad sense uh, for, for an entry? Two, two areas that I mainly look for. Uh, I would say I'm naturally a momentum trader. I'm looking for the ignition off a level, and that level has to be rock solid. You know, if you're looking at an hourly level or, or even a four hour level, it doesn't hold a lot of weight. But if it's coming into a daily, a weekly, or a monthly, there's a fair bet there's going to be a reaction at that point. So that's where I focus my attention, and I'm looking for that ignition. Now, when I'm day trading, I'm, I'm what I call market neutral because the day trend, the week trend, whatever you're looking at can be positively down. But if you're on a weekly pullback, the trend today could actually be up. Mm. So on a morning, I look at it as 
market neutral. But I also look for aggressive, strong directional moves. So you might see an out of the ordinary candle, you know, five times bigger than what the previous ones were. Certainly after news events, sort of non-farm payroll, this sort of thing. I also look for the reaction against that. That's where fibs come in fantastic. Um, sure. Touching on news, because you, you have the argument all the time about looking at all of the economics of the way the markets work. And they go, oh, well, the news is going to be this and the news is going to be that. Well, my, my theory on it is, well, if I don't understand it, which I certainly won't before the event, I'd rather just not trade it at all and sure. trade the aftermath. So I'm, I'm pretty good at waiting for a big news event, seeing what's happened and then trade the aftermath. So again, it comes back to waiting. Sure. No, and I like that a lot. And I think I think a lot of new traders, uh, especially, they're they're very uh, attracted to the news because it's exciting, right? You get you get some sort of big spike, and and you could make fifty pips in and thirty seconds, and it is very very exciting. But I'm actually with you on that. I, I like to trade the aftermath of a news event a lot more. I think it can produce some setups on the higher time frames for me. I'm, I'm more on the swing trading side of things. And you mentioned that there's even you know post news that opportunity to trade uh, more intraday, which I think is really really cool. Um, so Gary, shifting gears a little bit, I also know that you are a funded trader. Is that correct? Correct. Can you tell us about that? Uh, your experience with with funding programs, how that came about, and maybe where you're at today. Um, at the thick end of 300k. Uh, I've recently just passed a, a, another challenge for them. Uh, the company of choice is five percenters. Mm -hmm. Now, if you spoke to me two years ago and said, do you want to try a funded account? I'd have just gone, no, no I, I don't see the point of paying somebody to trade. I, I sure. just genuinely wouldn't. However, I do moderate a small group. And within that group, um, there was a little guy, uh, I'll give him a little salute, Volker. Um, and I helped him along and he's saying, I really want to try this. And I think, well, why? Just, just use your own funds, compound it up. It is possible because I've done it. And I'll work with you and we'll see if we get there. He says, yeah, but I really want to try this. And I said, well, okay. So I looked at the costs and they're not that bad. You know, a couple hundred quid. Uh, so for you, it's like, what, $240 mm -hmm. or something? Yep, depending on the, the firm. Depending yeah. on, on the on the right. firm. But we, we're not talking life-threatening money, let's put it that. Sure, of course. And I thought, oh, all right, then. Well, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll trade it alongside you because I like to speak from experience. And I went through it. And when I read the T's and C's of the fibers, I could do what I like. As long as I stayed within their tolerances, i.e. that they have a certain stop loss limit that you have the account can only go to a certain level so sort of like they'll put so much risk on the table you can have uh, and well you know the score if you lose a lot of money they're going to take the account off you so as long as you stayed in them boundaries you were fine and i thought oh, okay because i looked at some of the others and you weren't allowed to trade news you weren't really allowed to trade overnight you certainly weren't allowed to trade across the weekend and i thought that stifled what you do and then the worst part was they give you a time limit of like 10% in 30 days. I'm like, well, that's like pushing you down the gambling route. Right. Whereas the fivers, I had six months to do 6%. You know, mm. it's 1% a month. So it's not, yep. again, it's not um, crucial stuff. And I actually got to know them over the last 18 months. And I've ended up now doing the webinars for them. Um, I'm active in their community. And they pay me very well, not sort of to endorse them or anything, just off my own efforts. Sure. Because my accounts have now grown. And to me, all I'm doing is, is looking at my wage account, which is what I trade day in, day out. And it's very simple because I use pending orders all the time. I never go straight to market. Um, it's easy for me to go, right, I'm doing cable. I'm at this level here. So I put my order in there, click it on there. And it's just an extra bonus for me at the end of the month. So. Yeah. Um, I, sure. Now I've changed my mind. 
<laughs> yeah, well, no, that's 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 really cool that you've kind of come full circle. You had somebody who you directly were working with that you wanted to to jump in there and, and try it for yourself too. And now, now you said you've uh, basically completely switched switched gears, and now you're on board with it, which is really cool. So you're so you're managing over 200k. You said on the on the thicker end towards uh, to yeah, the yeah. Um, last mark. last week, uh, well, I dropped you the certificate. That that's another 50k added onto that fund. That's fantastic. And we'll show that once we do the edit. We'll yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I sent you some of my statements by all yeah. means, and they can see as each one's closed, it's a bigger fund as it goes up, up the ranks. Yeah, that's um, fantastic. But what, what I would say, if there's anybody out there that is looking at funded, I, I come from a business background. Um, I, I held my business for over 15 years. And I re look at return on investment all the time, ROI. And if you're putting 200 quid into a prop fund, and they are giving you X amount of funded capital. Well, as long as you know what you're doing and you pass that challenge, that's a good return on that 200 quid. Sure. Because even sure. if you screw it up after a sort of a couple of months, but you've been paid a couple of times, it's probably a bigger return for you. Sure. No, and that, <clears throat> and that's the uh, attract, uh, attractiveness of of prop firms in general. And like you said, I think uh, that knowing that you have uh, the ability or, or the the trading ability to sort of get to that point where you do get funded uh, is huge and it, it can actually be a great way to leverage your trading abilities if you know if you don't already have capital uh, at, at your fingertips. Let me ask you this. So, uh, so Gary, in terms of getting funded, let's say somebody who's interested in this is uh, curious about how they themselves could potentially get funded. What would you tell somebody uh, prior to trying to get funded what would you say like you need to be able to do this prior to trying because of course those uh, attempts to try and get funded can be expensive for people who don't have a lot of money for people who are working with lower capital bases what would you say they should know or, or be comfortable doing first prior to trying to get funded what's the what's the checkpoint that is a that's a great question because it's something i, I come across quite regular mm -hmm. and, and certainly in the group i moderate what what happens with it it's almost like the industry itself as a whole it's always sold on the big numbers. You know, are you going to have a 50K account? We can fund you 100K. You're not. Your funding is the drawdown limit. So if you work your position size, like sort of go backwards, if you like, work your position size on the drawdown. Yeah. And then if you're working out the stop loss limits, you'll normally find that you've still got quite a, a decent amount of stop to play with. But use the account as leverage. Because what I found is a lot of people will go, right, it's one to 30 leverage, even if it's one to 10, whatever, whatever criteria they've got. But they think they have a 50K fund. So therefore, they can put a massive position size on. And it just blows out the drawdown straight away. Right. However, if you broke it down into its smallest components, i.e. work out how much you have to do each day from start of entering to when the fund time limit's up, then work out the position size based on the drawdown, but achieve just a few percentage points over each day, you'll find the process is a lot easier. And once you're funded, obviously it moves up slightly. You can repeat the process, but you're naturally growing your money. So I guess the ultimate thing is just calm yourself down, slow right down. But yeah. if you don't know how to trade, don't do it in the first place. You know, I, I set my guys a challenge all the time. I say, do a 30 day challenge. And they always go, no, no, I don't want to. I say, no, do this. Because 30 days for a lifetime is nothing. Right. One trade a day. That's all you're allowed. One. And after 30 days, if you're in a positive expectancy and you stuck to the rules, because if you turned around to me and said, well, I took an extra trade where well, you failed because you broke your stringent rule. And what that does is it slows you down, controls your mindset, but it forces you to look for the best setup all the time. And if you can do that after 30 days and you're positive, then yeah, have a go. But if yeah, you no, fail, that's just a good point. It. It's a good point is is sort of uh, and, and you said a couple things there that I really liked is, is you said basically lay out a challenge for yourself in your case 
30 days, you get one trade per per trading day. Uh, and, and do you have that positive expectancy? If you can see that, then you're probably going to set yourself up for a more likelihood to have success with a funding program uh, attempt, right? Because a lot of times what people do is they're like, oh, I want to get funded. And they just jump in and they blow their money. And then they're like, well, shoot, now I got to do this seven more times before I finally get funded. And it's like that can rack up the bills. But if it's like what you're saying, you say like, take it slow, treat it like it's, you know, you're, you're funded 100000 but trade it like it's a $10,000 account. Treat it way smaller and, and be way more diligent with it. And, and that is a great point point to anybody who's listening who, if you're interested in getting funded, it's not this uh, miracle amounts of money being dropped on you. Yes, it, you are getting, if you get funded, a trading account that is funded with a larger capital basis, but you still have to trade it. It's their money. They want you to trade it in a very conservative way. And like you said, if you can do it in a way where, you know, uh, prior to taking the examination or the test phase, you're proving to yourself that you can do so that's going to set you up for a lot more success. And also, I believe a lot of those um, funding programs offer like free trials to also try it out before you do it. Is that correct? Um, there's a couple of them do. Um, yeah. the, the company I'm with, I, I don't really endorse any of them. Um, I only put my name to this one because I actively trade for them. Sure. Um, they have what they deem a, a boot camp where you've got 12 months and it's 85 euros, so it's like $100, if you like. Well, mm -hmm. Actually, we race into polarity, so it'd be about 85 for you. Um, it, it, it's peanuts to get in, but you've got 12 months to learn your craft, and they'll chuck in a, a load of little bits for you. But what I would also say with the funds is don't look at it as your sole income. You can take your little treats out of it each month, and fund your personal account from it so you can actually speed up the process of your own funds and to me it's like a no-brainer but i run my wages exactly the same i work out what what i want for the year and i break it down into a three-day week sure um, so the principles that we've been talking about i do practice them myself and it works for me but i've always been like that i, I kind of work out my money. I have various pots. I have a pot for my car, one for the house, one for my wage. If I want to go on holiday, I've got a pot for that and I, I trade them up and just take little bits out. Yeah. And I love what you said, Gary, about uh, sort of using that prop firm for, for really what it's intended. It's not necessarily meant to be like, oh, this is going to be your, your sole income source. But like you said, if you're able to to prove your ability to a prop firm and then start, you know, slowly growing that account and using some of the profits to fund your own trading account, that's a really good way of thinking about it. Because then, you know, once it's your money, you can do with it as you will. You can trade it whatever assets you want. There's no, you know, limitations that the prop firm may have. Of course, you still probably want to adhere to most of the same rules, low drawdowns and stuff like that. But it is a huge, huge point. Okay, you you get funded, you're you're sticking to the rules, you're slowly compounding an account, and then you can take those profits off the side and put them into your own trading account. So if you have the ability, those prop firms, that, that is why it's so attractive, is it's really a win-win if you have the ability to trade the way that they want you to trade, which is slow and steady and build an account over time. So I love that. That's some great points in terms of uh, how to get funded with by by practicing prior to, to taking the examination. And then once you are, how to treat it like it's a much smaller account than it really is so that you stay in their rules safely and then finally taking profits out of the back and putting them into your own trading account. All those are, are amazing points. What I also recommend is even, even if you have a small account of your own, not prop, but both mm -hmm. ways, and you're trying to compound up because everybody wants the big account. They, they want it now and they want it quick. That's the worst thing you can do the microwave culture of youth shall we call it because yeah. i'm old you see i'm not i'm not young and handsome like you <laughs> I, i'm old and bald right so i know how to wait but i also want to be paid for my efforts sure and i think some people get lost in that they think right i've, I've, I've made 500 quid this month now that could be fantastic why not take a little bit of it out take your better half for a meal or in my case, I'm an aging child, so I, I have toys everywhere, right? So I, 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 I buy myself something. Yeah. But certainly have something for that's on your desk. Because every time you look at it, you can think to yourself, 
training bought me that. Yeah. And then the next month, well, you're starting with a bigger pot, but you've had a little bit of payment from it as well. So you can naturally increase it and then do the same again at the end of the next month. And suddenly you'll find you're not buying sort of a McDonald's meal because that could be a treat. You're going to the, a restaurant for a meal. And then the next month you might be buying something a bit bigger and then eventually that might pay for a trip in a hotel. Yeah. But you're seeing this and it keeps you motivated because I think motivation is something that is really hard in the industry because when it's boring, that's when you are sort of hitting the nail on the head. If you're still in the excitement and you're trying to push it over and over, that's where your mistakes come and you will blow these sort of little gifts that you want. So you want something that you work towards and you think, well, no, I'll not take this because it's not that good. I'll wait and I'll get a better one and then I can have what I want at the end of the month. So sort of like re rewarding yourself for your work, I guess, is what I'm trying to drive at. Yeah, no, and, and accepting the, you know, to add to your point there, accepting that at first it's a McDonald's meal, but eventually it can be much, much bigger. And that's the beauty of, of trading is that it's really the, the eighth wonder of the world is compounding and building accounts and doing that over time and understanding that, you know, especially if you if you plan on trading for the next 10, 20 years, 30 years, whatever it is to you, you have so much time to compound and build accounts. And, and that's an amazing thought process uh, for the people who, who really love this stuff and continue to to want to do it each day and want to continue to build accounts. Again, you're, you're starting out with small, but eventually you can build up and, and um, you know, purchase things for yourself, whether it for your family, go on trips, whatever it is. And that's that truly is the, the beauty of developing this skill over a long period of time, rather than like you said, the microwave oven uh, analogy of wanting it today, right then and there, you want the big returns. You know, that's that's honestly, it's overrated. Really, the ability to just do this and grow this is is so key over time. Well, it is. I mean, my car that's sitting out there, um, it was paid for by prop mm -hmm. and it took it over a year. So as far as I'm concerned, that prop bought me that Range Rover that sits on my drive. Yeah. Um, but I knew I wasn't going to get it in the first month. I just worked towards it. Right. But on the way towards the big again, I still wanted something out of it as well. So I was funding another account with the profits and that paid for my holidays this year as well. Yeah. So I'm always working forward like that. So little steps, I, I think. Don't don't swing for the fences. Right, exactly. And and that's all that, you know, that's, that's the cool thing is that once you have been doing it for a long time and you've been able to compound and build accounts, you get to that point where they're no longer little things. It's big things like, like you said, a car or a trip or whatever. And that's, that truly is the, the coolest thing to me about trading is that if you're starting small, don't let that discourage you because longer term, if you continue to, to add to that account from other sources of income, or maybe perhaps you get funded with a prop and you're able to fund your own account, it all slowly starts to build and uh, in the right direction, of course, that's that's the ideal uh, way. So um, yeah, Gary, uh, so Gary, where can, in case people would like to, to follow up with you, of course, I know that you have uh, Instagram where we've been chatting a little bit, but you also have some other socials. Where's the best place for people to hear more? From just, you? just really, if you find me on YouTube, uh, yep. I, I am an aging dinosaur, last of the Neanderthals. So social media is all to me. Uh, but YouTube, all of my contact details are there. Um, it, very easy found. Very easy. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so just look up. It's the Scruffy Trader on YouTube. Find the Scruffy right? Trader on YouTube. Um, you'll see my chaotic way. Um, and, I, and I call it the chaotic way because you touched on saying I don't take it seriously. Um, it's because I'm not selling anything. This is right. my job. I have to amuse. I mean, YouTube for me um, started as a visual journal because I do journal everything. I'm, I'm big on my journals. And I always focused on the losses. And then a few of my friends said, you should make something with that. And I was yeah. like, well, well, okay. And that was like three years ago. And it's now got this little small following that we see. But I am an aging child. I mean, let's be honest. I've just shown you a Batmobile and I'm 52 year old. Sure. And, sitting, and sitting next to it to Star Destroy. <laughs> so, um, but I think you have to enjoy your job. If it's yeah. stressing you and you can't, there's something sadly wrong somewhere. Yeah. So absolutely. your mindset has to be on point. Yeah. Now for me, it's humor and music. I use music a lot to uh, calm my mind, 
but I also use it in trading, believe it or not, because the one thing that I think is worse than anything is an itchy trigger finger. So if I'm looking at a 15 minute candle and it's got eight minutes left to run, I'll watch a couple of music videos. And when they're finished, the candle's about done and it stops me spooking myself when I, it, the charts on front of me. Um, so I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm wrong with that. No, no, those, those are those are great tips and, and understanding, you know, yourself as a trader, that's a whole probably another episode we could do together talking about the psychology component of it. Uh, but Gary, thank you very much for coming on again, guys, do me a favor, do Gary a favor, go find him on YouTube, say hello, drop a comment, let him know that you watched the podcast and enjoyed something from it. Um, and Gary, thank you very much for coming on again. Uh, anytime. Pleasure. I, I hope to do it again sometime soon. Anytime, anytime. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.